Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're here in my shop again. Mitch behind the camera. We've been asked to do a drill sharpening video, so here we are. I looked in my box and I found a drill that is quite worn. Apparently I must have drilled something quite hard. And if you look here, the size of the drill, if I measure it like that, it's like 485. And then if I get up the top here, I'm down in the 470. So this is, this area right in here has become undersized. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go outside right now. We're going to use a chop saw and we're going to cut off that end bit. Okay, so I can start with that. I've got a little bit of an angle going. So we're going to go over to the grinder now and I'm going to show you quickly how to sharpen this and then I'll explain how, how the process works and what to look for. Okay, so we'll go to the grinder. I've sharpened this drill. It's a, a 31 64 almost half inch. I got the mill set up. Let's just go and see how this cuts. I've got a piece of aluminum in the, in the vise and I've got basically a half inch drill. We're running at 650 RPM. Put a little bit of oil on the drill. Let's see what happens. That drilled through quite nicely, so I say that's a sharp drill. I went online and I looked up the terminology of a drill and I found this. It's from Morse. There's a couple terms here. There's flutes and there's the web. So these, these parts here, those are the flutes and the web is in the middle there. So that's what you need to you need to keep in mind. All the rest of the terminology, you don't really have to know it, learn it or anything. So flutes, the web, and there's an angle. There's an angle which is called the lip angle or something like that. I call it the rake. because it's coming back. You need space in here because otherwise this will rub. So that's one of the things that we need to talk about. I bought a, a drill gauge. I got this off of eBay. It came out of China, including shipping. It was $6.85. And I, it came a few weeks ago. I've never used it. In my life, I have never used one of these. What this does is you put it against the drill and you can check the angle. You can see this angle is not bad. 
maybe not perfect, but it's not bad. So that's an angle. The angle is 118 degrees. That's the standard angle. Now, <clears throat> I don't believe it has to be 118 because I've, I've checked a few of my drills. Some are a little bit less, some are a little bit more. What's important is the two sides of the same length. That's what's really important, not the angle so much. A steeper angle is better for soft metal and apparently they sell drills for harder metal where the angle is 135 degrees. I don't know if I've even ever bought one of those drills. This is just your common drill. So when, when you're sharpening it, you want to keep this at the right angle. When you flip the drill over, you want that to be at the same angle. So some people use a rest. I do it more or less freehand, like you saw. And whichever way you do it, you need to be able to move it. How you can sharpen a drill, you can put an angle on like that, and then you put a, a different angle on, and then maybe even a third angle. I don't think that's really necessary. As long as you lift up the drill and you get that rake, that's what's important, important to me anyway. So you need to sharpen the wheel. So I've got a new wheel here. It's, this was 50 bucks. And how do you sharpen a wheel? Well, you can buy a stone like this and while the wheel is running, you can run it across like that. But that does okay, but it's not great. Then you can buy what's known as a Huntington dresser. And that's what they look like. And these work okay too, but they're not great. When I was younger, I worked in a automotive machine shop and there was a, a lot of grinding machines there. And I ended up working on an internal grinding machine for about half a year. All the stones there are sharpened with a diamond on a stick or a single point. I've had this one maybe 40 years. It never wears out. It's an industrial diamond. It's not an ornamental diamond. And, and those machines, this is mounted and the wheel moves back and forth. So it's really precise. On something like a hand grinder, I just hold it by hand and I'm gonna show you. We're gonna put this onto the grinder and you're going to watch me sharpen the wheel. If you don't have a sharp wheel and it's bumpy or it's got grooves in it, you're not going to do a good job when you sharpen. So how much are these? Well, I went to my local shop and he told me that uh, a Huntington dresser is $64 and a single point is $144. And I went, wow. So I looked online and in Canada anyway, this is available from Lee Valley for $35. And the Huntington dresser is available from Granger and it's also $35. So that's not a huge amount. So I advise you to get one of them. I recommend this. This is the best way to sharpen a wheel. You'll do a very good job. When you're sharpening a drill, you don't want a coarse wheel. This one's kind of on the fine side. It's going to do a nicer job. If you have two wheels, you can have a coarse one for the roughing, the fine side for uh, the finishing cuts. So if you don't have one of these, you can make something homemade. You can take a, uh, a couple nuts. I just held them together by a cable tie. We call them zap straps in Canada. So that's gonna be approximately the right angle. Can you see how this one's not quite the right angle? There's a little bit of play in there. And also I thought, if I get a Sharpie, I'm gonna grab a fine Sharpie. If I put that on like that, and I make a line right at the end of the flute, like that. When I, when I turn it around 180, I get a pretty good idea if the flutes are the same length. So that's using a Sharpie, just kind of informally checking. So the next thing 
I want to talk about sharpening is the web. You see this whole area here? When it when it's sharpened like this, that takes a lot of force to force that through the metal. That's why in a larger drill you would probably drill a smaller centering hole first and then it makes it easier for this uh, for the drill to work but I'm going to show you outside again how to sharpen a little relief in there and that takes off the pressure doesn't have to be huge just it just takes off the pressure so we'll we'll do that as well right now we're going to go outside and put on this wheel and sharpen it. I just wanted to show you the old wheel and the new wheel. You can see how much larger the new wheel is. This one's going to cut a lot faster. It's going to do a nicer job. So I don't know how long this one's been on here. A long time. We have the new 8 inch wheel grinder installed and Safety, I want to talk about this for a moment. When you put a new wheel on, or even a used wheel, when you start it up, you never stand in front of the wheel, because if it's damaged or has a defect of any kind, it will explode. So you always stand off to the side, then you fire it up. So what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm going to rest my, my left hand fingers here. Can you see that? It's on the guard. And then I can go back and forth. I could have a rest, I just, I'm not in the habit of using a rest. If you want to have a rest up here, that can work too. But this works for me. I just go back and forth like that. And I have to take off quite a bit because it's so... As I start it up, watch, watch how out of round that is. Well, it's not out of round, it's, it's off-center. And the stone, if you look across there, looks pretty smooth. I don't see any, any up and down happening. Okay, I'd like to talk a, a little bit more about holding the drill and, and the motion. A lot of you will probably want to use a rest, which is you know, this is the one which, which came with my grinder that I almost never use. So I sanded it, I took off all the rust. What I've done is to mark some lines here at, at 60 degrees. So that could help you because when you line up the drill, you want to line up with those lines. So if you're using a rest like, like this, which is good, you always want to have a very little, a very little space in here, maybe about a, a millimeter. If you have it back, if the drill ever catches and forces it down, that's not a good situation, not safe. You usually don't rest the drill on here. You usually rest it on a finger and you line it up and then you go up and then you come back down. That's what that's what I would do because as you come back down, you can line up by watching the sparks and the space in here, you get to re-line up the face with the grinding wheel. So it's like that. And it comes down. And then you want to swap hands and you want to do the same thing over again. So that's the motion. You want to raise it up 
and sometimes you want to have a little extra force on the back here because you're looking for a rake there. Now, how much is the rake? I went online and there's all different numbers. They start at five and they go up in, into the 20s. Well, in the 20s, you, that, you're looking at quite a steep angle. When you put that much of an angle on, that's making this front edge more fragile. So the less of an angle you have there, the stronger the edge is. It's a compromise like, like anything else. You want to have a little bit of an angle. You can experiment, see how it works. But that's the basic. That's what you do. You want to, and it's practice. You can't get this probably the first time you want to practice. Now, I don't use a rest. I just rest my hand on the guard on the side and that works for me that's what i'm used to so you have to figure out what's good for you what you feel comfortable with always work safe but that's can you see how i'm raising up the drill but i'm keeping this face in line with the face of the stone it's not like i'm not doing that I'm not doing that. It's a motion up. So this stays at the, and, and so the drill stays at the same angle when it's going up. That makes sense? And then on the web, you want to use this edge. That's why I sharpen the face and I sharpen this because you need to put the, Put the drill bit right up like that, and you take a little little notch out. You are making making the web thinner, and then you do the other side as well. So we can go outside, and I'll show you that. You know, there's a few ways you can thin the web out. I'm going to show you what I've used for a long time. So the three things <clears throat> are the flutes, the angle of the rake. That's what I call it. Other people call it a different name. And the web, the web needs to be thinned, especially on the larger drills, if you're gonna drill straight down. I don't have a guard on here, so what, I'm, what I do, I rest my hand against the body here. So it's not like I'm just free form. I'm resting my hand here, and then I can, I can work it like that. So let me just, I'm gonna to touch up, up the flutes a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of a flat spot right there. And then we'll work on the web. I just wanted to tell you something that I'm, I'm looking for when I'm doing that that you probably can't see. When I'm holding the flute up to the grinding wheel and just even as I press lightly and go back and forth, I'm watching the sparks which are coming down. That tells me if I'm at the right angle. If I see more sparks in the mitt right here, I know that I've got the angle like, like that a little bit. If I see more sparks here, I know that I'm holding it a little bit like, like that. If I see even sparks, I know that I've got the angle that I was grinding at last time. So watching the sparks, if you can see them, and I can see them, it gives you a clue as to how you're holding the drill against the face of the grinding wheel. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take out a little bit of metal here because we need to sharpen up this face. This is a, 
a cutting edge, obviously right there along the flute, and we want to bring, bring the cutting edge around a little bit. So you thin the web and it takes a lot less force for the drill to go through. I'm going to hold my fingers here and then I can look down and I can see what I'm doing there. So that's basically what I want to do. So the angle of the drill, it's not like at a right angle, I'm holding it. You can see the angle of the drill like that. Here we go. I'll thin the web. That's just one way of doing it. Other people have different ways, but this works for me. Usually when you drill a hole this big, you put a center drill in anyway. So let's just go, let's go back to the mill and let's just see how this cuts through. So it cuts. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video on drill sharpening. Uh, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, much appreciated. Take care, see you next time.